Persephone is the goddess of nature, the one who sows the seeds of life. And at the same time, she is also the queen of the underworld. Subscribe to the Woe Fairy Tales channel to find out why Persephone is our underworld queen. In ancient times, nature was always abundant all year round, and it was all thanks to Persephone's effort. However, the creatures were indifferent and unfeeling, not valuing life or the fruits sown by Persephone. No matter how hard Persephone tried, the result remained the same, and she was deeply troubled by this. Oh, poor raven! The lucky raven was saved by the goddess of nature. Why are you so infatuated? Fly away! A few days later, the raven returned, and Persephone <laughs> couldn't believe that it was Hades, the king of the underworld. Since that day, he had a deep affection for Persephone. Persephone, come with me to the underworld. Be my queen. The goddess loathed Hades for constantly believing that he was undermining the results of her life-giving work. Never! I still have a mission! Life and loss cannot coexist! If I had known you were a raven, I wouldn't have... That's enough! He wanted Persephone at any cost and abducted her. Even though Hades promised many things like power and wealth... <laughs> no, no, no! Release me, you wicked! Yes. Guard the door carefully! The king of the underworld was determined not to release Persephone. Every day he would personally come to take care of the wife he had kidnapped. No matter how much she resisted... La! La la! I can't hear anything! I can't hear anything! You monster! Stop clinging to me! Warm water? Shall I call a servant for you? You impolite person, you scoundrel! I am a lady! Persephone couldn't take it anymore. She tried to escape, but couldn't. Until one day, Hades and his subordinates were in a hurry to resolve an issue and forgot to seal the door to her room. The nature goddess didn't miss the opportunity, but Persephone realized that the souls were entirely different from the indifferent creatures on the surface. Some souls were afraid. Some were in pain. And some were extremely happy. Mm. <laughs> Do the souls here have emotions? While they were on the surface, they were indifferent. The yes. nature goddess decided to stay and investigate what she had always struggled with. Even though she didn't want to, she had to accept Hades' care. So, you agree to be my queen? Thanks to this, Persephone gained more power. She used the opportunity to travel all over the underworld to learn about the souls. You lied! The demons will torment you! You cannot escape! Why are you so cruel? Aren't these souls unjustly accused? They are always deceitful. To avoid guilt, I am never wrong. Next one! A cold, cruel person? How can he bring emotions to these souls? Another deceitful soul. Lock her up! Torment her! No! I'm innocent! Please, let me go! I'm innocent! Stop! I will personally judge this girl. It's impossible! You are... The queen of the underworld, huh? right? I have the right! Huh? Huh? It was only when Persephone empathized with the other souls that she discovered the mysteries and the faults of Hades. So, I'm free! Thank you! I'm alive again! Persephone felt extremely satisfied because she had embarrassed Hades. But from that day on, Hades began to judge the souls in her way. Despite his terrifying appearance, it didn't suit the task. Persephone realized that Hades' gift of loss brought emotions to the souls. They were happy to be back from the realm of the dead. They were sad to leave life behind. They regretted things they hadn't huh? done in life. <laughs> huh? <laughs> so, both loss and life are necessary for people to have emotions, right? 
Persephone gradually <laughs> understood the true nature of Hades. He always judged the souls fairly. That's why he started following her example. With the goddess of life, guiding the souls became easier. Hades always took the time to listen to her opinions. Huh? I'm grateful to you, Persephone. Thanks to you. I won't make mistakes anymore. It had been a long time since someone recognized Persephone. I followed your advice. I built a paradise for good souls. <laughs> if you miss home, you can come here. Ah, uh, to, uh, and to ease your homesickness. <laughs> Persephone realized that Hades had become much gentler, and it seemed like huh? he respected her, never causing her harm. Huh? Hades, why do you have feeling for me? Uh, you have a strong life force, warmth, enthusiasm. Those are things I lack. Things <laughs> I can't find in the underworld. Their love didn't last long because... <clears throat> my lord, we're in trouble, my lord. Huh? You rascal! <laughs> for some reason, too many new souls descended into the underworld <laughs> And even the old souls couldn't escape. Huh? Huh? Life on Earth is being destroyed. People can't survive. They can't reproduce anymore. It's because I'm not there to sow the seeds of life. I have to return to the surface. No, you can't go. You're the king of the underworld. You must understand that this can't happen. The nature goddess was right. Faced with so many souls, Hades couldn't argue. Afraid that Persephone would take the opportunity to escape forever, he hatched a sinister plan. If you eat this pomegranate, you will be bound to the underworld forever. <laughs> Wait, huh? Persephone. The road huh? to the surface mm. is long. Carry this pomegranate <laughs> with you. But when Hades was full of confidence in his plan, Everything is thanks to Persephone and our Lord. Everything will be saved. You will all be revived. <laughs> For the first time, Hades realized that these beings were not afraid, but completely trusted him. They trust us because of Persephone. Isn't she also trusting me? Does she truly love me? I can't deceive her again. Huh? Huh? Persephone ran happily to the surface, paying no attention to the pomegranate. <laughs> huh? Persephone, the goddess of nature, she's back! She's alive! She's been saved! It had huh? been a long time since Persephone made the creatures mm. on the surface have emotions again. <laughs> and she realized that, to truly love life, one had to experience loss and pain, which made her own bountiful life all the more precious. <laughs> Calm and peaceful, Persephone finally realized how hungry and tired she was. Stop! Hades had to confess everything to Persephone. You still haven't eaten the pomegranate. Please give it back to me. Please! Persephone was extremely furious, but... Remembering the anticipation of others and looking into Hades' huh? sincere eyes... Hmm. Persephone, what are you doing? Mm, I've come to realize that to give meaning to my life, I need to experience loss. Loss of life makes people cherish it, and it's all because of you. Huh? That's why you are the missing piece I need. <laughs> because she only ate half of the pomegranate, Persephone wasn't completely bound to the underworld. For half a year, she stayed in the underworld, making the world dry and barren, which was winter. For the other half of the year, she brought spring, richness from the realm of the dead. The mortal realm always anticipated the moment when the <laughs> goddess of spring returned. And Persephone, she was content because she had found the missing piece to make up for her shortcomings.
Princess Aurora in the southern castle had finally woken up. Huh? The bell rang out nine echoes, dispelling the moisture and wildness of the vines after hundreds of years. They turn into thousands of fragrant flowers and colorful butterflies. But the beautiful princess was no longer here. There was an ugly and extremely scary zombie instead. Huh? No! Why? Why is that? What have I become? Aurora, you have to calm down. Princess, I'm coming! Something must have gone wrong. Your true love, Prince Philip, has woken you up. After Aurora got into trouble, the king and queen passed away because they were so devastated and merciful. For over 200 years, the kingdom had no more prince or princess. Meanwhile, the royal blood in the kingdom is considered lucky, which will make the kingdom flourish, free from disease and misery. The whole country was eagerly waiting to see the princess, and also the wedding of the century with the prince who saved her. There is a stream in the myth. When people bathe in it, they can revive once. Although it is difficult to find, as long as there is hope, you must try. The fairy godmother used magic to temporarily restore Aurora's appearance, then hurriedly left. Prince Philip admired Aurora's beauty, rushed to propose to her. Huh? Huh? I... I'm sorry. I'm not ready for this. Huh? Princess, why didn't you agree to the princess proposal? Mm, I don't want that either, but strangely enough, my heart doesn't have any fluttering. You know people have been waiting for this moment for a long time. The prince is also your benefactor. Huh? Princess, you shouldn't hesitate. Huh? I know what I have to do. In the face of public pressure, Aurora finally agreed to marry Philip. The whole country was bustling with preparations for the wedding, except for the princess who seemed to wither away day by day. The side effects of magic were about to wear off, and the body began to transform. She was scared and hid away from everyone. That night, the princess was crying desperately in her room when she heard a knock on the door. Outside the balcony was placed flowers with very beautiful colors. The strange thing was that as soon as she inhaled their fragrance, the princess began to recover her human form, and they immediately huh? faded away. Oh my god, I am back to normal! Huh? Unfortunately, just like fairy powder, the effects of flowers last only a few days. From that day on, every two days, flowers were brought in the old huh? way. Aurora watches curiously as she sees the crow she saved before falling into eternal sleep. It's you? That's impossible! You're his descendant, aren't you? It's been 200 years! Since then, crows have become soulmates who share secrets with princesses. If you could talk, I would know where the flowers came from. One day, when Aurora's transformation suddenly takes place, <laughs> Prince Philip is also there. Huh? He was scared and immediately locked her up. This is the price you pay for cheating on me, my fiancé. I did nothing wrong! When I woke up from sleep, it was like this! I will pretend that I don't know anything if the wedding will still take place. Why? What are you plotting? <laughs> you have no right to doubt me if you still wish to lay your eyes on it. Besides, if you don't agree, I shall announce to the entire kingdom what had become of their beautiful princess. 
Aurora had no choice but to agree to Philip's threat. On the day of the wedding, Aurora did not expect Philip to make her appear to be a zombie. People were scared, calling her a monster, throwing things at her, trying to scare her away. At the moment, a monstrous man with black wings appeared, grabbing the princess. Half man, half crow! It's Howl! He is Maleficent's huh? son! <laughs> That's right! I'm back to avenge my mother! Your princess is under my spell! <gasps> oh hi, Prince! If you really are the true love of the princess, then come to the brink of bringing her back! Otherwise, I curse this kingdom to perish in your hands as soon as you become his huh? successor! The prince rushed to pursue, both to prove himself worthy to inherit the country, and to plot to destroy both Howell and Aurora. <laughs> Under Philip's uh -huh. hail of arrows, Howell spread his wings to shield Aurora and got wounded. Finally, he was exhausted, hugging the princess who fell into the cliff. At the bottom of the abyss is a deep lake, surrounded by bright rainbow flowers. I finally see you, Princess of Howell. Close your eyes and let me show you an interesting story. How is the only son of the dark fairy Maleficent. Not only is he handsome, he is also extremely brave, creating a barrier to detain the bat zombies flying under the abyss. Spending a lot of energy, Hal fainted. When he woke up, huh? he found that Princess Aurora was there to take care of him. It was the best time Howe had in his life. Hmm. Then Maleficent huh? knew about it. She told Howe to come back. She'd help him get the princess. At that time, Howe, who only thought of what he liked, had to have it, so he found a way to take Princess Aurora to the deep forest. <gasps> Perhaps Maleficent had a grudge against the king and queen, but since she was forbidden to enter the kingdom, she could not take revenge. The day is finally here. Princess Aurora brought herself to me again. It is a pity, for the sake of a hundred years, that I cannot destroy you at once. Then I curse you to sleep for two hundred years. And when you wake up, you're doomed. <laughs> the fairy godfather and the royal army chased after. It was over. He only used the power to seal Maleficent and reduce the curse by Aurora, will sleep but wake up when there huh? is true love. Huh? Old bulky vines grew around huh? the princess, and then spread throughout the castle, so that no one could be with her. Howell regretted that he had indirectly pushed his beloved into such a situation. He tried to go in, stay next to the princess, look for her to sleep peacefully. Time passed quickly. And all of Howell's efforts to awake the princess were in vain. It's been a hundred years, and if you don't wake up, I know what to do. There's only one way to turn her to a zombie to prolong her life, but is that really the right thing to do? Trust me, 
I'll find a way to restore your original appearance. But even after turning into a zombie, Aurora still couldn't wake up. Hal is now in agreement. He accepted to find Aurora another lover, as long as the princess woke up and was happy. However, the prince also found it difficult to retreat when they appeared. Then that day came, Philip appeared. The princess woke up. <gasps> huh? The man has appeared. I will go and protect you from the distance, wishing you happiness. He didn't know it's his love that woke Aurora up. The <gasps> princess will be happy, but then Howl heard crying. Knowing the princess began to turn into a zombie. He risked his life to descend into the abyss to find the antidote. How exchange 100 years of cultivation for one of my flowers? He had only 1,000 years of cultivation. The flowers he brought to the princess have already consumed most of them. And how is just a weakling now. Huh? Huh? Stop talking! I brought her here. Please, make her a complete human. I will accept any price. But what else huh? do you have to exchange? Hmm. So these huh? beautiful crow wings? What do you think? Huh? Don't! Huh? Please don't do this! The miracle took place. Howell brought the beautiful princess to the shore. Only the wings did not exist anymore. Huh? The Lake huh? Goddess, please return to wings and magic power to Howell. I'll be a zombie for the rest of my life! Listen, Aura. Your kingdom still needs you. If you don't return now, it will be without a ruler. Do you want your people to fall into the hands of someone as wicked as Philip? Hmm. I told you earlier that you were cursed by me, and now that you have returned to human form, they will gladly accept you. Suddenly, the sound rang out, huh? signaling that the zombie birds guarding the abyss huh? were about to wake up. Huh? We will run up the path and leave the valley. <laughs> However, just a few steps away from the edge of the cliff, Aurora slipped huh? due to her carelessness. <laughs> Even though the zombies huh? have come to the place, Howl is still determined to use a little bit of force to protect the person he loves the most. Before turning into a full-fledged zombie, Howl was able to take the princess away safely. Hot tears fell on the princess's sad face. You haven't told me directly that you love me! Come up here, Howl! If you don't show up, I'll be really angry with you! Aurora! Huh? Thank God, you're back! Aurora huh? reveals Philip's true face huh? and declares Howell was the one who sacrificed to save her. Huh? Huh? She ascended the throne, became a powerful queen, made people's lives happy. But only the queen knows how much her heart still hurts. Soon after, the fairy godmother returned, bringing with her the same rainbow flowers that Howl had brought. <laughs> By the wind, send this flower to him! When the work is done tomorrow, I will visit you again. Suddenly, a flock of brightly colored butterflies rose from the abyss, carrying Howl, now human. Aurora. Huh? <laughs> Finally, the love of the Black Crow, the villain's son, is also rewarded. <laughs> Once upon a time in a magnificent and luxurious fairy tale kingdom, where gods, <laughs> demons, and humans coexisted, <clears throat> 
there was a beautiful and strong 18-year-old princess named Daisha. Daisha possessed a magical sword that was passed down to her by her mentor, the Sun God, which had the power to expel the souls of demons from possessed individuals. Furthermore, she also had a magical eye since birth that could be used as a gateway to trap evil spirits inside, which made everyone admire her. In particular, her third eye had the power to see the imminent death of any living thing she touched. Despite her abilities, Daisha was absolutely forbidden from interfering with the cycle of life and death. If she disobeyed, she would be punished by the gods. Although Daisha was strong, she had a weakness. She often became tired and could not use her third eye when exposed to bright light like the sun. In fact, she could even see a dark soul inside her at times, which made her very worried. Hmm. She asked her mother about this, but the queen only became sad and evaded the question. I cannot explain everything to you right now, my child, but if you want to use your magic eye during the day, remember to wear your cloak. I have also locked all the rooms containing treasures, so if you need anything, just tell me. Hmm. Daisha didn't want to make things more difficult for the queen, hmm. so she kept these questions to herself. Hmm. One day, the magic from Daisha's eye was completely reversed. Instead of being able to use it to control demons, it unleashed many evil spirits. Daisha didn't understand what was happening, so after she managed to deal with the demons with her magical sword, she hurried to find the queen to talk about it. Upon arrival, Daisha was horrified to see the Sun God angry, capturing the queen. Excuse me, Sun God, why did you take my mother's soul away? Hmm. That's because yesterday, you violated the prohibition when you used your third eye to save your mother. Therefore, I'm here to punish your family. The Sun God recounted that yesterday, when Daisha bid farewell to the queen to visit the Sun God temple once a year, just like every year, her third eye suddenly lit up. It revealed to her that the queen would pass away today due to old age and weakness. However, Daisha did not want to lose her only loved one, so she decided to change her mother's fate. Daisha quickly made an excuse to help her mother visit the Sun God temple today, and then set out on her journey. After completing all the tasks at the temple, she happily returned home, but suddenly noticed a dark orb heading towards her. She quickly dodged and tried to catch the culprit, but he escaped. Nevertheless, Daisha was still happy that she had protected her mother from the wicked person today. However, the sun god witnessed Daisha's wrongful act, so we came here in person to punish both mother and daughter. But all of this is my fault! My mother is completely innocent! Therefore, please forgive my mother and punish me in any way you want! Uh, since we are teacher and student, I will spare your mother's life if you promise never to repeat this mistake and agree to give me the divine sword. Because your impulsive and immature actions have disappointed me and I cannot easily forgive you. Therefore, I want to give the divine sword to someone who is more responsible than you in the future. For me, my mother's life is more important than anything else in the world, so I will give the divine sword to you. However, when Daisha handed over the sword to the Sun God, he suddenly smirked mischievously and swung the sword mm. towards Daisha's third eye. Daisha froze and saw a three-eyed soul like herself escape from her body and collapse. The soul flew towards the Sun God and was captured by him as his third eye in the surprise of Daisha. Finally, the day of revenge has come. Then, he broke his sword and transformed into a cruel demon king. It turned out that years ago, the younger brother of the demon king loved the queen so much that he agreed not to do anything wrong. Therefore, the demon king was very angry and wanted to destroy the couple, but his younger brother tried to use magic to seal him and passed away. Eighteen years later, the Demon King finally had enough power to escape the seal. But when he went to take revenge on the Queen, he found Daisha in the temple. The Demon Queen quickly recognized that Daisha's third eye was similar to that of his younger brother, and it was surely the daughter of that couple. Hmm. Hmm. 
If that kid is the hybrid child of the queen and my younger brother, then that magical eye will represent the soul of the demon existing inside its body. Then, if I can release the power and dark soul of that kid, my magic will increase exponentially. <laughs> However, despite using every method to obtain the eye, the Demon King still could not easily achieve this ambition. He needed something that could separate Daisha's dark soul from her body, and that was the Divine Sword. <laughs> Therefore, the Demon King had to apply a part of his black magic to the third eye and silently harm the Queen to force Daisha to hand over the sword. As soon as he obtained the treasure, the Demon King finally gained the magical eye. It turns out that because I have half of my soul as a demon, that's why I feel tired and see my dark soul every time I come into contact with the light? That's right. Your mother probably didn't want you to feel ashamed of your identity and wanted you to focus on defeating the demons, so she kept this a secret. However, I will let your mother and you witness how the kingdom, which you have protected for so long, will be destroyed under my hand. <laughs> He then released many demons from the Third Eye to destroy and dominate the land. <laughs> Although Daisha was very shocked about her identity, she looked at her mother and people being attacked by the Demon King and his demons and knew that she had to fight to protect them. However, at this moment, Daisha didn't have her magic sword or her Third Eye, so the Demon King was able to defeat her easily. I can't give up like this! But I need a new plan to defeat him! She looked around and saw a crystal lamp swinging back and forth. <laughs> Suddenly, she came up with an idea. Hmm. Uh. Quickly, she picked up a broken piece of her sword and threw it towards uh. the lamp. Yeah. Although the Demon King was yes. able to dodge it, Daisha was able to steal the orb that held the Queen captive from his hand. Yeah. Mother, wake up! It's me, Daisha! Daisha... It seems like the Demon King has returned and attacked me again. I know everything, and now we need to find a way to defeat him. She ran to a locked room at the end of the hallway, but the Demon King caught up with her. Ha! <laughs> you foolish child. Why would you willingly trap yourself here, making it easy for me to defeat you? If you're so good, then fight me! The Demon King attempted to cast a spell at Daisha, but he couldn't help but notice her confident expression. <laughs> ah, it seems like you want me to destroy the gate behind you. Is there something in there that scares me? Don't try to fool me. Suddenly, the orb containing the queen's soul flew out of Daisha's hand and taunted the Demon King. Mother! No! I won't spare you! Enraged, the Demon King fired a spell at the orb, but Daisha quickly shielded it with her body. Daisha, let it go! No, I won't! Mom, you have always been the one who worries and takes care of me for so long, so I cannot abandon the duty of being your child for these matters. Moreover, this is my fault for changing my mother's faith without permission. Therefore, I am willing to sacrifice myself for my mother. The Demon King was furious and used his last spell to create a huge explosion to destroy the mother and daughter. However, the door of the room was heavily impacted and collapsed revealing many shining treasures illuminating towards the third eye of Daisha, making the Demon King gradually fall due to fear of the bright light. Seizing that opportunity, Daisha quickly stood up and used the remaining power of the sword to defeat the Demon King. When Daisha regained her third eye, she quickly ran to the Queen to inquire about her mother's health. Daisha, I am too tired. Perhaps I cannot pass through this life of door and death anymore. Therefore, my child, please take good care of yourself later. It can't be! I can't let my mother leave me! Please, heavenly beings, save my mother's life! I will exchange it for any price! As soon as Daisha finished speaking, the Sun God truly appeared in the hmm. dazzling light. Daisha, through the recent battle, I understand your filial pity for the Queen, as well as the motherly <laughs> love of both of you, who can live and hmm. die for each other. In addition, you have contributed a lot to this kingdom in the past time. Therefore, I agreed to extend the Queen's lifespan with the condition that Daisha, you will deduct a part of your own lifespan to replace it. In addition, you must strive and continue the journey of demon slaying to protect everyone. I agree! After the Sun God fulfilled his <laughs> promise, the Queen and Daisha were finally able to be together and live happily ever after. <laughs> Wow, very 
Tells.